welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. A lot of us deal with allergies, whether it's seasonal allergies or other issues that cause you problems. So today we're going to talk a little bit of the science behind what causes allergies and hopefully some ways to help you out. Today we're talking with Dr. Ray Rodriguez from Baylor Scott and White. So Dr. Rodriguez, I guess before we jump too far into it, in your body, what's going on when you have allergic reactions to something? Well, it's an immune reaction. You know, what happens is you develop this allergic antibody named IgE. And that IgE is specific to whatever environmental trigger or allergen from pollen, dust mites, animal dander. And that IgE rests rest in around uh, some allergy cells called mast cells. These mast cells, they're going to be in your body. It's going to be in your respiratory tissue. It's going to be in your lungs. It's going to be in your skin. So when you get exposed to this allergen, that you produce this specific IgE is going to trigger the mast cells to activate. And when the mast cells opens up, it releases a whole bunch of mediators into your body. Uh, for example, histamine, that it can trigger sneezing, itching, but also releases a whole bunch of mediators like it's gonna trigger an immune reaction in your body or inflammation in your body. What, what's the difference when your body's reacting to say, you know, seasonal allergies versus environmental to, compared to food allergies that some of us deal with. If we go back to environmental allergies, we divide, we call it allergic rhinitis. We also have seasonal or perennial. Seasonal is going to be for pollens, perennial is going to be for animal dander, dust mites, cockroach moles. And then food allergy is different because for food allergies, you tend to have a more severe systemic reaction that can involve your whole body. For example, we call that anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis is when you have two systems in your body acting at the same time. One system can be the skin with hive or swelling, but also can be your GI tract having gastrointestinal symptoms like vomiting, abdominal pain. So if you have skin plus GI symptoms, that's anaphylaxis, or you have skin symptoms plus respiratory symptoms after ingesting a food, that's called anaphylaxis. Are allergies something that people are just born with, or is this something that can develop throughout your life? Well, you're not born with allergies, but remember, we are a reflection of our parents' genetics. For example, if you have both parents suffer from allergies, your kids will have a 75% chance of having allergies. But again, it depends on your environmental exposure, you know, to as you grow up. To different allergens in your environment, you can develop allergies. Again, you are predisposed from the beginning, and it just depends on the trigger. So is there anything you can do to prevent these allergies, or is it just kind of limiting being around these type of uh, uh, allergens? There was a hypothesis many years back. It was called the hygiene hypothesis, where we were saying that we were too clean nowadays. We used too many antibiotics. And they did a study when they, when they looked at the prevalence of allergies or an asthma in people who were living in farms exposed to cattle, they have less prevalence of allergies and asthma compared to patients who were living in the suburbs. Uh, so that's still being investigated. And then for food, the most drastic thing that has happened in the last, I will say, um, 10 years, that we can prevent food allergies, for example, to peanuts. Let me explain that. So. What I did by residency in pediatrics back in the late uh, 80s, we used to say back then to the, to the kids who were born, to the parents, to avoid peanut until you're around age five years of age. And then this smart pediatrician from the UK who was taking care of patients from uh, Jewish descent in the UK, he, uh, he was following back in the late in the late 90s, he was seeing that patients who were raised in the UK following the guidance of avoiding peanut, they, have a, they had a higher, pre, higher prevalence of peanut allergy compared to patients who were living in Israel. So what happened in Israel, they were feeding peanut earlier in life compared to the UK and the US. So they did a study. One group, they followed the guidance of avoiding peanut to age five. And the other group, they were introducing peanut earlier in life, between ages four months old to 11 years of old. So patients who were following, the group was following, avoiding, they had like a 14% chance of peanut allergy compared to 2% chance of developing peanut allergy if you were introducing peanut earlier in life. And that's why the guidance changed during the last 10 years. They're promoting that patients between four months to a year of age to start introducing P 
peanut earlier in life. And that has helped to decrease the peanut prevalence in the U.S. So you were talking one thing, your body releases histamines when we're dealing with allergens. What, what is the medicine antihistamine? What, what is that doing to try to help control that issue? Sure, so histamine is gonna trigger what? In the, in the respiratory tract, it's gonna trigger sneezing and itching. It doesn't do anything for congestion. Uh, that's why you buy over the counter uh, antihistamines, they can, they can uh, come in mixed with a decongestant. But that's why it only helps to control sneezing and itching. It doesn't do anything for the congestion. And that's why for patients with nasal allergies, we try to add something else, like for example, a nasal steroid or a nasal antihistamine. So people use antihistamine and stuff like that, but some people have been using more nasal sprays or like the neti pots and stuff like that. Is that something that helps out with this? Yes, I always recommend my patients who have nasal allergies to use the saline nasal spray or the neti pot. First of all, it helps to get rid of those secretions and also will help to clean your nose from those allergies you've been inhaling through the whole day. Nasal steroids, what they're gonna do, they're gonna help to decrease the inflammation and the number of allergy ce uh, inflammatory cells in your nasal tissue. For somebody that's been having uh, allergy issues, when does it get to the point where somebody should make an appointment to come see a doctor about it? When you're gonna see the uh, allergy immunologist is when you are using your daily medication and you still have, you're still very symptomatic or you cannot get rid of the stuff that you think you're allergic to. You know, you have allergies to pollen, every time you go walk outside your house, what's gonna happen? You're gonna be exposed to pollen. And you're still very miserable or having side effects with the medication, that's the time to go see an allergist. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do allergy skin tests to identify the possible allergens that you have reaction with. And then the next step is to provide allergy immunotherapy or allergy, or we call allergy shots, what we're trying to do is to change your immune system from being a pro-allergic to a less allergic. It's like a desensitization in a way, and it has an efficacy of around 85%. Remember, if you stop taking your medications, what's gonna happen when you're exposed to the allergen? You're gonna go back and have the same symptoms, but with allergy immunotherapy, again, what we're trying to change is the reaction of, of your immune system to the allergen. Well, some interesting information, Dr. Rodriguez. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and talk a little bit of the science behind these allergies. Oh, thanks for having us. And again, don't forget to see your allergies.